All right, so we're going to begin our lesson on equations of lines in two dimensions. Now, most of the stuff we do here will be, seem kind of unnecessary and overcomplicating, uh, and that's okay. In two dimensions, we're well set up for dealing with equations of lines in the, the methods that we've had, but we're not well set up for three dimensions. So a lot of the stuff that we're going to do here in two dimensions is just building a new, uh, new setups and language and um, formalities so that we can extend it into three dimensions. And that's because in three dimensions we don't have uh, as nice of forms for equations of lines as we do in two dimensions. So the way we're going to start is with something that we know called the equation of a line uh, in slope-intercept form. So we recall this from grade 9, y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. So let's start off with a bit of an example to remind you how to do this. So an example, let's let line L equal y equal to, uh, is a y equal to negative 3x plus 2. Okay, if we had to graph this, well, the graph would look like this one over here. So we, we look at this equation, we look at 2. So when x equals 0, y equals 2. So x equals 0, y equals 2. That's our starting point. Okay, so that's what we used to call our starting point the y-intercept. <clears throat> and then we use the slope to get a second point. If we have any two points on a line, we can draw the line. But we need two points. So we're going to use the slope to get a second point. The slope is a rise over the run, so negative 3 over 1. So we're going to drop 3 from the y-intercept and run 1. And that would be the next point okay, at 1, negative 1. Now that we have two points, we draw the line through it and we have the graph of that line. Okay, so here's where we get to the point where it seems like we're going to be overcomplicating a little bit. If you let x equal any number, the way you solve for y is subbing that number in for x and evaluating for y. So let's let x equal to t. If we let x equal to t and sub that in there, simple, we get y equal to negative 3t plus 2. Basically that, with instead of x, we get a t. t is called a parameter. And now we have an equation for both the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate of any point on this line in terms of some variable t. Okay, t is any real number. All right, so that's just setting us up here for uh, what's coming in terms of uh, new equations. Okay, so this is called a parameter t. So now we're going to look at this and say, well, we're going to start parametric equations. Okay, so parametric equations. Generally, they are in this form. x equals x0 plus ta, y equals y0 plus tb. Okay, so what we drew up here, or wrote up here, is x equals t, y equals negative 3t plus 2. Looks kind of like that. Okay, and it is. So this is, in fact, a set of parametric equations for that line. Okay, so for that, for that line, I'm going to write it down here. For y equals negative 3x plus 2, x equals t, and y equals 2 minus 3t is a parametric equation for it. We could have also written it like this, so that it might look more like this one up here. x equals 0 plus t, y equals 2 minus 3t, so now we have the t's on this part and these values here, okay? Okay, and that's one form of the parametric equations for that line L, y equal negative 3x plus 2. So here's what we want to check. Well, is this one also the same line? So how, if it is, how would you justify it? So that's the question you've got to ask yourself. So you could pause the video right now and check that before I'm about to tell you. Okay, so if you're coming back now, it's um, x equals 1 plus x and y equals negative 1 minus 3s. To determine whether it represents the same line or not, we want to see if they have a couple points in common. If they have two points in common, then they're going to be the same line. So let's try a value of s equal to 0. 
So if s equals 0, then x equals 1. And if, y equal, if s equals 0 here, then y equals negative 1. Well, is 1 comma negative 1 a point on the line? Let's go back up and check. 1 comma negative 1 is a point on the line. So that's good. So when s equals 0, we get a point on the line. What about when s equals 1? When s equals 1, you get x equals 1 plus 1, which is 2. Or y equals negative 4. So and y equals negative 4. So we get the point 2 comma 4. Is that on the line? Let's go up here. I don't see it on the line, but would it work? Well, so remember the point is 2, negative 4. From this point here, if we use the slope to get another point, we would rise negative 3, which would bring us down to negative 4. Negative 1, down, neg down 3, gives us a negative 4. And then you'd run 1, which would bring us to 2. So 2, negative 4 is a point on that line. Okay. Well, how would we get the other point? How would we get this y-intercept? Well, the y-intercept happens at x equal to 0. So when we look at this, what value of s makes x equal to 0? Well, it's negative 1. So if s equals negative 1, x equals 0. If s equals negative 1, negative 1 times negative 3 is positive 3, minus 1 is, is 2. So 0, 2 is a point on this line, which is that one there. So it now we've now confirmed that it has three points in common. Okay? So in fact these two are the same line. What's neat about this is that we have two different forms of the same line in parametric form. But in slope intersect form we can only have one. Okay? Now, so we've checked those values to see if the line is, uh, is the same and they are. Okay. Now, taking a look at that line, we're going to draw it again here in just a second. Um, a vector that is parallel to the line can be found from the slope. The slope equals the rise over the run. For line L, the slope is negative 3 over 1. Okay, so let's redraw this line again. So we've got it here. So when I redraw the line, still has a y-intercept of 2, goes through that point 1, negative 1. I've drawn in here a vector that is parallel to the line. Okay, By starting at the origin, rising negative 3 and running 1, I will get a vector that is parallel to the line. It's basically that line translated to the origin, so moved over. Okay, So we call this a direction vector, or I call it a slope vector sometimes. Okay, So that, that vector take it from the slope, so it's basically the run comma the rise is going to be parallel to the line. Okay. When we look at the parametric equations for L, we notice that the run and the rise are the coefficients of the parameter. The parameter is T. <clears throat> okay. So if we go back to the um, equation of that line, so the, the run and the rise, so the run was 1, the rise was negative 3. They're the coefficients of the parameter t. Same with this one, 1, negative 3. It's the coefficients of the parameter s in that case. We also notice that the constant term in the parametric equations represents some point on the line. Let's go back and look at that. Okay, so the constant term 0, 2 well, that's a point on the line. That's that point, the y-intercept. 1, negative 1. Well, that's a point on the line. That's this point here, a second point. We could have used any other point on the line to represent the x naught and the y naught in this case. Okay. So the x naught and y naught represent any point on the line, and the a and the b are taken from the slope, or the direction vector. So A is the x-coordinate of the direction vector, B is the y-coordinate of the direction or slope vector. Okay. So this is a way of looking at x naught, y naught, any point on the line. AB is the rise, uh, run, comma, rise. Okay. So here's an example of uh, looking at this. We've got the equation of a line that goes through the point 
7 comma negative 5 and has a slope of m equal to negative 2 over 7. Okay, so that could be x equals 7 plus 7t and y equals negative 5 minus 2t. Where did I get that from? Well, here's x not y not. Okay, x not y not. So I'm plugging those two in here. And here is the rise over the run. So the rise goes in front of the, the y parameter and the run goes in front of the x parameter. So this is one form of the line in parametric form that, has, that satisfies this condition. Well, we could also look at this slope, slope of the line and say that that's actually 2 over negative 7. So I could have negative 7 as the, the, uh, the rise, or sorry, the run, and 2 as the rise. So I could have it this way. I changed the parameters because it's not going to, the t value is going to be different here, so let's call that s. Okay. And the point has stayed the same. We only know that point on the line, so we can't really change it. Also, if we took this slope and we were less efficient and we called it negative 4 over 14, so it wasn't a reduced fraction, negative 4 over 14, well then we could have this equation here. Okay, so this would be negative 4 is the rise and 14 would be the run. Okay, so that's that for uh, that question. Now, if we continue this and we look at um, converting the line to slope-intercept form, uh, say you didn't know the slope, you just knew the, the, the parametric equation of it, so we know the parametric equation is what I've given you there. Okay, so this one. So if we're going to convert that to slope-intercept form, well, we know that x naught y naught is some point, and b over a is the slope. Okay, so b over a, negative 2 over 7, is the slope. Well, we go back to what we've done in grade 9. We take the slope, we plug it into the equation y equals mx plus b. And then we plug in the point. You evaluate, and you get b equal to negative 3. And therefore, y equals negative 2 over 7x minus 3. Okay? So you can check this using the other ones. So the other parametric forms right here, you could use those to try and transfer that into slope-intercept form as well.